Hello friends, welcome back to part two of James's Gems of the Week. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, go check that out first. But uh, here's part two, picking up on uh, August the 3rd. Let me share my desktop with you and bring up... Uh, one of these has to be the right thing. The last tweet that we talked about in the previous video. So let's move back to the thread and keep scrolling up the list of tweets that I, James Stevenson, liked. So the next tweet, uh, August 2nd, comes from Forward Cap, at Forward Cap on Twitter. Uber, and to a great extent Hertz, continue to highlight the strong commercial use cases for EVs. From Hertz's call last week, 50 to 60 percent less maintenance than ICE, lower depreciation than ICE, better economics than originally forecasted. So if you take a look at this. Wow, that's really big. Uh, I'm going to not do that. Let's just go over the highlights here. Uh, so yeah, 50 to 60 percent of the maintenance costs of ICE vehicles and very confident in the unit economics of EVs. So that tweet is out there if you want to go read the whole thing. Uh, should be easy to find from Forward Cap. Uh, really promising unit economics on EVs for the rental car business. That bodes well for Tesla and anybody else who can make good electric vehicles. This doesn't even factor in, uh, forward cap continues, the fuel savings or higher customer satisfaction ratings that customers experience with EVs. So an Uber driver says she ditched her Toyota for a Tesla because her Camry costs $600 a week to fuel compared with $450 for leasing and charging a Model 3. So the benefits are really big and really significant. I'm going to take these ear pods out because why do I have ear pods in right now? I'm not listening to anybody. So it's just a weird sensation to have noise canceling happening while you're talking into a video that you're recording. OK. Next up, the list of tweets that I liked, one from Martin Vieca, at Martin Vieca on Twitter. This is the uh, Vice President of Investor Relations for Tesla, who tweeted, over the past few weeks, I've been speaking to some of the largest retail holders of Tesla, listening to their stories of how they became shareholders many years back. I gotta say, many conversations left me speechless. This community is another level. So, I like that tweet. And uh, I like uh, Martin's officiating of the ceremonies at Tesla's annual shareholder meeting. Uh, a lot of us gave uh, Tesla the business over the uh, stockholder proposals being read during that event, which is not the most riveting television anybody ever saw. But uh, I feel think is a uh, required, a legally uh, bound requirement of those annual shareholder meetings. So what can you do? Uh, maybe one day we'll figure out a way to not have a million minutes of uh, investors' lives wasted listening to proposals that are definitely not going to be approved. Okay, uh, here's a, a tweet from Elon Musk saying, cool, what did he think was cool? It's that in an interview with Yahoo Finance, Pete Buttigieg said that Tesla is the largest producer of EVs in this country. He's the transportation secretary for the Biden administration. He also gave Tesla the credit for its role as a leader in the EV revolution. So that's why this is news. Uh, the administration has not always recognized Tesla as a leader in the EV revolution. So thank you to John Kreider at John Kreider one on Twitter for that article and bring it to Elon's attention. So it could be brought to the attention of many other people as well. Good to see that. Gary Black has a tweet here that I liked. Tesla three for one stock split should pass easily at the uh, annual meeting of shareholders tomorrow. Uh, so this was August 3rd, talking about the August 4th meeting. And we'll go into effect. So he got the date wrong. It's not Monday the 22nd. It's Thursday the 25th, which is kind of a weird date. I don't really understand how they picked that date. Um, 
but he said in 2020, Tesla stock rose 81% during the three-week period between the split being announced and the effective date of the split, which was August 31st of 2020. So, and here's the chart of that happening. So, that th this is not to promise that the same thing will happen again because the stock market is rarely so uh, predictable. Uh, but I thought it was a good tweet nonetheless. Here's a tweet from Tesla Historian that I liked this day in Tesla Q history. Apparently I'm a low IQ idiot who is still bullish on this junk rated stock. <laughs> so what are we talking about here? Well, we got two tweets. We got a two for one from uh, uh, Tesla Historian this week. The first from Tesla Charts, pro tip for Tesla bulls. If you were doing well enough in life that the stock price actually doesn't matter to you, you wouldn't be trolling people on days like today. When you do, you're telling everyone how your life has been a miserable failure. Oh, the irony. The irony is so thick you can cut it with a knife. Uh, glad I got my coffee. That's one of the reasons why uh, part one was so short and uh, I needed to break this up into a two-parter. You gotta have your second cup of coffee, don't you? You have to, to keep going. Next, a tweet from Enron Capital in reply to Tesla Charts. Anyone who can read a financial statement is already short Tesla. Most of... Oh, come on. Yeah, so... I'm not going to read the rest of that tweet, but you can see it on your screen. And, uh, you know, in, in classic, characteristic uh, Tesla historian fashion, these remarks and the date upon which they were tweeted are appropriately uh, demonstrated visually on the stock chart for Tesla. So we, we all know how this story ended. All right, so that's, uh, that's that tweet. Next, a tweet from uh, S. Bomick 23 Sean. Um, so I'll click through here and scroll up so I remember the context. Oh, yeah. So I was wishing a happy fourth birthday to this update letter from Mark B. Spiegel to the people whose money he invested in $42 split adjusted strike Tesla put options that expired worthless 18 months later. So I'm definitely not going to read you this, which is bigger if I don't click on it. Uh, but you can feel free to pause this and read his uh, investor letter that he had to send out as an update. And uh, so we have an update here from this year, from July of 22. Since inception on June 1st, 2011, the fund is up approximately 109.6% net, while the S&P 500 is up 283%. So the, the, the trick being used here is this is not the average annual return. Oh no. This is over the 11 year period uh, the fund has managed to only double uh, investor money, whereas the S&P 500, if people had just put their money into spiders, S&P 500 index tracking. Uh, instead, they would have made more than double <laughs> the amount of, of return on their investment. Uh, and the Russell 2000 is up 158% since inception. Oh, here it is. The, the fund has compounded at 6.9% net annually versus 12.8% net annually for the S&P 500, 8.9% for the Russell. So. Yeah, investors in the Stanfill Capital uh, management funds are perhaps not very happy with their returns. Okay, uh, so I like that tweet. Next, a tweet from Trung Fan at Trung T Fan on Twitter. Never deleting this app. So, what's this say? Well, John W. Rich, uh, fake tech executive tweeted congratulations to the IRS on winning the $846 million Mega Millions jackpot. So the winner gets only $433 million after tax of the $1.28 billion. So uh, the fake tech exec uh, parody account here has done the math between the two of these numbers to show the portion that was won by the government. They took most of the money uh, from that jackpot award uh, wait a minute, are you telling me the lottery is nothing but a state-sponsored tax collection scam? 
No, the lottery is actually used to catch time travelers. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so yeah, I've also heard the, uh, the lottery described as a tax on people who are bad at math. That's a good one. Uh, don't play the lottery, folks. The lottery is not... Um, the, the odds are not in your favor when you play the lottery, that's for sure. Your expected return, if you've taken statistics classes before, is a negative number. Uh, and it's not a small negative number either. Uh, don't play the lottery. Next, a tweet from Alex, AJ Tourville, on Twitter. When it comes to Tesla ownership, I'm glad so much of the stock is held by retail investors rather than institutions, which is a great tweet. Uh, Stephen Mark Ryan tweeted, We'll never get tired of people who said absurd things being held accountable. I look forward to this happening to me in the future, too, with greater than a thousand videos created on YouTube plus Patreon in the past three years. I'm going to have some big misses that should have been obvious at the time. So, uh, I replied, Something tells me you're going to be proven right about a lot. <laughs> Stephen Mark Ryan gets a lot right, or uh, that's the, the track record. Oh, so this was me promoting episode six of Who's Hatin' Hard on Tesla today. So James's Gems of the Week is not the only recurring feature on uh, my channel, James Stevenson, which uh, I remarked uh, to Farzad is an ego project, my, my whole YouTube channel. It's all about me. It's my, it's my likes of the week. Darn it. That's what's important. That's the content people uh, need out there. Uh, and then this one, Who's Hating Hard on Tesla Today, was my original concept for this uh, YouTube uh, channel back in 2018, and I stopped making the videos because it took me so long to make them, and so few people watch them. Like, literally tens of people were watching these videos back then, and I got so much more traction on Twitter, I just went to Twitter instead of YouTube for about four years before I brought the channel back. So that's what happened there, uh, and Stephen Mark Ryan was nice enough to leave me this comment, never stop making these vids. So uh, that's where that came from. And Elon said was a fun hang, talking to the Full Send podcast. So Elon did sit down with the Full Send podcast and record a long three-hour video. Now, the first half hour of this video... Uh, Elon isn't there for, so it's just them talking, I I prepping for what they think the video is going to be like once Elon arrives. Uh, so a really um, broad-ranging set of topics on that, uh, that video. If you haven't seen it, you can go check that out. Elon also tweeted, I had more kids in Q2 than they made cars, uh, replying to Gary Black in a tweet about Lucid. So, Lucid posted net revenues of $97 million versus a $147 million estimate, and they're forecasting just six to 7,000 units of production versus the 12 to 14,000 previous guidance. Uh, as Elon Musk says, production is hard. Yes, it is hard to produce lots of vehicles, but you must produce lots of vehicles if you are ever to be profitable because the barriers to entry, the costs of making a car company that functions at all are so high, you have to sell lots of vehicles at a really decent gross margin to break even at the profit line. Just to make zero dollars worth of profit, you have to sell lots of cars. And that is why most car companies go bankrupt. It is not like running a, um, a lemonade stand or a bar or a, a lawn service or a car wash. The barriers to entry are extremely high. And you've got to convince tons of people to buy your cars before you can have a hope of uh, sustaining your business. Next tweet from Holmar's Catalog, who arrived early to the Tesla annual shareholders meeting and found that they had a Tesla shop in there. So this photo shows people standing in line, some of whom are in costume, to purchase Tesla merchandise from a little store at Giga Austin. So I thought that was fun. Then here's a video Holmar's 
uh, blog took from the Cyber Roundup. So you can go check out that video. I'm not going to let all of it play here. Then uh, Trevor, at Trevor Pinion on Twitter, uh, tweeted, Out of all the shares I have, this one is the most special to me, and I'll never sell it. And you may be able to notice from uh, the amount paid for that share, the reason why 42069 is uh, uh, a fun acquisition price for a share of Tesla that's worth a lot more than that now. Next a tweet from Stephen Mark Ryan. I am currently punching myself in the face. Now, why would I like that that tweet? Uh, we've got to know what the context is here. Well, it started with me tweeting out a link to the annual shareholders meeting as it streamed live. And then just a question that I uh, added to that thread. Comment below with your favorite way to pass the time while doomed time-wasting stockholder proposals are being read aloud. And... Uh, that's, that's how Stephen Mark Ryan passed the time, uh, repeatedly punching himself in the face. And I also liked this tweet from Tesla Musk fan. Literally everyone at the meeting collectively pulled out their phones and liked your tweet. <laughs> so that's what they were doing during those, uh, those stockholder proposals being read aloud. Uh, Galileo Russell, uh, at gfilchy on Twitter, replied, tagging Elon and Martin Vieja. We got to make this happen. No more BS proposals next year. So this was, how do we create a shareholder proposal to disallow the three minute argument period at the shareholder meeting each year? Yep. Uh, I like to tweet from Earl of Frunk Puppy during that uh, live event, should be using at I cannot underscore enough charts. So this was while Elon was presenting free cash flow charts and such. I like that suggestion. I think that would be that would be good publicity for my YouTube channel, but more people should like and subscribe too. If you haven't uh, liked and subscribed, you could do that now. Uh, maybe I'll save that for the end of the video. Next is a tweet from Holmar's blog. I shouted out Alaska for 28 delays later. So Earl uh, was ordered by Uncle Sam to move to Alaska for work, and so... There, there is not enough Tesla support infrastructure in Alaska yet. There will be one day, and uh, we all hope that that day comes soon for Earl's sake. Next, a tweet from Sawyer Merritt, at Sawyer Merritt, breaking, Tesla shareholders have approved the three-for-one stock split. So that went through. A tweet here from at MKRYST70 on Twitter. How come someone think that Tesla will need to borrow or issue equity to raise funds when in the same conversation Elon mentioned that share buybacks are possible? Doesn't make sense. So this was in reply to me tweeting after a really solid month of gains leading up to yesterday's annual shareholders meeting, Tesla retraced some today, prompting many people to guess at why including this fool.com contributor who thinks investors are worried Tesla is going to raise big money. So a couple of exhibits here. So there's that uh, little retracement we saw last week. And this is the article. If you want to read it, you can pause the video here and read those two still frames to see what was published as news in my stock app uh, related to Tesla stock. Just somebody saying, hey, Tesla is going to have to raise money, but Tesla will not have to raise money. And I've made a few videos on that recently. I'll try to leave those linked in the video description. Here's a tweet from Farzad. Mark your calendars tomorrow, 8, 6, 9 a.m. So this event happened live yesterday, and the replay of the video is available on YouTube. So you can go check that out. That was a lot of fun talking to Farzad yesterday. Here's a tweet from Jeremy Cook, at Jeremy underscore Cook on Twitter. Proud of my daughter and one to smile back at one day. So he's retweeting his daughter, Kelsey Cook, who made her Netflix debut on a show called The Sandman. So I've been watching that show lately and saw uh, Kelsey's appearance in Sandman and thought it was pretty great. So I like that tweet. Jeremy Cook is one of my Patreon supporters, so one added unadvertised benefit of being a Patreon supporter 
is that you stand a better chance of getting a like from James on Twitter uh, when you are. You also get early access to some of the videos that I produce, including James's Gems of the Week, uh, which uh, Patreon uh, subscribers usually get a week early access to or thereabouts. My Tesla Weekend at 4K Podcast tweeted, I spent some time digging before realizing this was something you'd know off the top of your head. So thank you for sharing the links and insight to make it a better video. That's what I love about the Tesla community. This is just what we do. So this is Brian from My Tesla Weekend, um, who put out a good video and uh, consulted with Tesla Herbert and me to do some research before recording that video. Uh, specifically on treasury stock and the buybacks that Elon mentioned and how exactly that would work. Can you buy back shares and then hold them as treasury stock and sell them in the future if, you know, the stock price goes way up or you want to raise more cash for some reason? And the answer is yes, you can do that uh, if that's the way that you buy them back. There's also another way of buying them back where you cancel out uh, those shares so that they are they don't exist anymore. And if you do that, then no, you would have to do a new equity raise uh, to issue more stock. So good topics there. Uh, and the next tweet from my Tesla weekend, would anyone like to see an interview with Farziness? This is Farzad Mizbahi. Uh, on my channel. He's so smart and clever and knows more about the inside workings at Tesla than almost anyone who isn't bound by an NDA. Uh, so I clicked like on that tweet. Here's a tweet from Gary Black updating people on the legal jargon from the Twitter uh, suit. So I'll leave that. That's probably not even big enough for you to see if you pause that unless you've got a 4K TV or something. Uh, but there's those uh, screenshots. You can go look it up on Twitter if you would like. Here's a tweet from Bradford Ferguson at Brad S. Ferguson. 30 million SUVs were sold globally in 2020, according to Statista, and people don't think that Tesla can sell 2 million SUVs globally? Tesla doesn't just appeal to people who currently own luxury cars. In 2019, 62% of trade-ins were non-luxury vehicles. The average price of cars exceeds $45,000. So. People think that Tesla's going to have a really hard time uh, selling more cars as time goes by, but prices are just higher than they've been in the past. You know, you, you can't go buy a, a car, a new, a new car for $15,000 that's, you know, a car you want to drive anymore. That, those days are gone. And uh, people do trade up when they buy Teslas most of the time. You know, people are trading in Hondas and Toyotas to buy Teslas. And that's going to continue uh, to be true into the future. We're getting close to uh, caught up here with a tweet from Alex, at Alex underscore A Voigt on Twitter. The i3 is history. BMW has delivered the last 18 gold paint i3s out of 250,000 delivered ever to its own museum, and a new BEV won't be delivered until 2025 with a below average operating profit, shrinking sales, weak demand, and a poor outlook, the company is in trouble. So BMW, get your act together, get serious about making electric vehicles. It is important to your company's survival that you make good EVs. And that's not just BMW that I'm chastising here. That's every company that isn't serious about making really competitive, really compelling electric vehicles. You need to get on that. Time is running out for your company if you don't have really good electric vehicles. And the last tweet that I liked from Farzad Mizbahi, uh, in case you missed it, chapters included in the video. So Farzad went back and labeled that live stream painstakingly with uh, the topics that we were discussing. So if you want to browse through, skip around and see the topics that you're interested in. This was a, a very wide ranging discussion that was a lot of fun. So, uh, having said that, you have reached the end of part two of James's Gems of the Week for last week. If you have enjoyed this video, I said it before, but I'll say it again. It really helps out my channel if you click the like button so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, you can do that. There's a notification bell you can click that'll alert you anytime I make a video public. 
Uh, and I will see you in the next one.